Hey boss, today I really want to talk about the power of creating a culture where we can disagree. We are living in a world, in a country that is divided on many things and it comes across when we are out, you know, talking with people, it can be very divisive and I really, you know, want to share today on how we can actually talk to people, communicate in a way that is not divisive because we are going to disagree. We are not going to agree on everything. And we today are disagreeing about uh, religion. We're disagreeing about our views on liberty and freedom. We're disagreeing about our values. And really, it can be very divisive depending on who you're talking with. And I really want to talk to you about you know, those divisive topics such as the experimental drug that is being administered to people under the, um, um, I'm going to call it the name of a vaccine, when it really is an experimental drug, it has not been FDA approved. Also, the mask mandates that are occurring uh, within businesses, within federal governments, within school systems, you know, the requirement to make that mandatory for another year or who knows how long. Um, we just don't know. So um, another topic could be the mandatory vaccines that are people are being required to take in order for employment. So these things people have very strong views about. And I think if we have uh, take the approach of how can we create a culture where it's okay to disagree because we are going to disagree. We're not always going to agree on everything that somebody has to say but really focus on the give and take of that conversation and be able to communicate in a very respectful way. Hey, I'm Dr. Heather Williamson with the Transformation Group and welcome back to the channel. So if there is somebody that you know that would actually benefit from creating a culture where we can disagree, please share this video with them and it will help them when they go to creating that culture and managing their teams. All right, so let's get started. So today I really want to share, actually it was an article that I read and it was written by Dr. Rick Hansen and it was entitled The Power of Positivity According to Psychology. Now being a social psychologist myself where I really focus on leadership, I thought this article was a really good one and I thought I would share this with you today. So the, he has really four ideas that he shares. And the first is to recognize that people matter. And when it comes to people mattering, um, the people really, you have to start thinking about that people are more important than being right. So recognize the uniqueness in people, where they're coming from, and that they are more important, that relationship is more important than you being right. Also know that the views may be, your personal views may be skewed or even biased. I mean, we're all coming from different backgrounds and experiences. So we're going to have biases and that's okay if we are open to what that person has to say and really, uh, really understanding where they're coming from. I think that's kind of the important um, takeaway here. Also know that when you are, um, when it comes to people mattering, that you need to make sure that the views are accurate. It's not regurgitating uh, mainstream media propaganda or somebody's opinions. They really need to be accurate. And I think it would really be excellent if people just turned off the darn TV and get back to really getting out and understanding other, each other. Also, showing respect and kindness to one another is uh, a way to make sure that you do put an emphasis on that people do matter. The second idea concept that uh, Rick has is that words matter. So when it comes to words, we do not want to be intimidating in how we communicate. We want to really focus on asking questions because asking questions is going to help everyone understand where the other person is coming from 
And when it comes to disagreements, that's kind of really what we need to understand is why are we disagreeing on a certain topic? Maybe you might have information that I don't have or in vice versa. So asking questions is key. Also, when it comes to asking questions, think about this. Um, think about asking questions that uh, are going to be inclusive. So you're using words such as we, not using words such as you, which can be kind of being perceived as lecturing at. So you don't want to do that. So use the words such as we and really focus on um, words such as I think I heard you say or could you explain to me a bit more about what you mean. I think when we use words like this and you're really trying to understand where that person is coming from and then also see if you can find common ground. What do you all agree on? And then really focus on that and not so much the differences that are, you know, the staring you in the face and that can cause, you know, those red flags that will um, maybe encourage some people to shut down as well. Um, also, don't dominate the conversation. This is another one. So if you dominate the conversation, you're not really caring what the other person has to say. So don't do it. So also when it comes to um, understanding that words matter, make sure that you're actually listening to that person. And this is going to be another t uh, area of focus in just a minute. But the third topic uh, or a third idea that you can actually implement is you have different views, so don't apologize for your beliefs. I think this is really important. I don't think that we should give in and shut ourselves down when we have beliefs that are aligned with our core values. So don't apologize. It's okay to have differing opinions. Also, don't feel guilty when you disagree. We're just, you're not always going to agree and that's okay. Um, never say sorry for what you truly believe in that aligns with who you are as a person and what makes up those core values that you live daily. So don't apologize for that. Um, the other person, whoever you're having that a disagreement with, is probably not apologizing. So they're trying to put their opinions on you and this is kind of a way where we can actually make sure that that doesn't happen, that we really are focusing on truly understanding that person and where they're coming from. Now the fourth tip I have for you um, based upon Rick's ideas is to be a good listener. So when it comes to being a good listener is it's easy to shut down and walk away when things get too personal or attacks are being made. I get that. It is very easy to do because you've just had enough. But if we take the approach of asking good questions, such as what would you like me to know about and fill in the blank, X, Y, Z, or what do you think that we can agree upon and just find that common ground is important. Also, if you, uh, when you are asking questions like this, it is, you know, like I said before, don't just regurgitate the propaganda that's out there. Make sure that you share specific information or where you've got that information from and make sure it's a reliable source. And I will tell you this because not every disagreement is going to be, you know, hugs and, and shaking hands when you're done. It's just not. But hopefully the majority of those disagreements will if you go in and use these four tactics such as understanding that people do matter, understanding that words matter, and then making sure that you don't apologize for your personal beliefs. And then fourth is to be a really good listener and make sure that you understand or trying, attempting to understand where that person is coming from. And like I've said before, people are not always going to be open to this. And it might be that you just have to step away and come back at a later date when they are more receptive to having that honest and open communication where you're not going to be labeled um, a racist or close-minded person. So having disagreements is part of 
of human nature. It is what we're going to experience. It doesn't have to be on a daily basis, but it is going to happen. So make sure that you take these four strategies and really implement them and let me know how they're working out for you because I would like to see how Rick's suggestions, Dr. Rick's suggestions are actually working in the, in I call it the field in, in a real life um, business where you are having to interact with a lot of people and you're not always going to agree with everybody. So play, uh, let me know what you're thinking. Uh, let me know of other ideas that you would really like some help with. I would love to create a video on that for you. And if you like this video, please like the button below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification. It looks like a bell so you don't miss out on any leadership tips that I have uh, for you on a weekly basis. And last but not least, go out and be that boss that your employees want to work for. Until next time, bye.